these teams this is this is the two laps these guys have been working for all winter long and for months even before the 2006 season ended when the green flag waves the race is on if the caution waves it's over if they complete the two laps it's over martin bush biffle gilliland sadler green flag I don't believe he can wait very long, Larry. I believe if you're going to make the move, you got to make it quick. I don't think he can wait too long. If they're going to get him, they need to jump to the outside right away. You know he's not going to give up the bottom, so you got right to go to the outside. Look at the outside line. Jeff He's Glenn in that 24 car with his teammate Casey Mears, but, but Casey leaves him out there. Now, one back. I'll send a file behind you. He's coming hard about half back now. Now, when these guys on the outside, when they get side by side with these other cars, they're done. We're coming to the white flag. It's up to the five of Kyle Busch. How long can he wait if he's going to go? Still single file. White flag, one lap to go. To the white man. Behind him. Front six, four, eight, single foul. Here they go. They got to go. They got to get Mark. Move. They got to move him somehow. He gets back to that yellow line right around the bottom, all the way through turn one and two. Mark Martin is driving the race of his life, and there's nobody that's better at holding people off at Daytona. And Kyle Busch lagged back a little bit. Is he going to get help? Is he going to come? He's looking. Back behind you. Almost, he almost squeezed Harvick into the wall, and here comes Harvick, the 29, Coming with Matt outside. Kenseth. Oh, Mark Coming got outside. loose. Watch Mark got bottom. loose. And down. Harvick's getting a run off turn four. It's going to be a drag race all the way back to the start-finish line. No caution. They're side by side, right Mark. to the line. Big Mark. crash. Here they come. Checkered flag. Harvick. Harvick. Kevin Harvick wins the Daytona 500. We got one car and there's still his roof coming across the start finish line. Still Clint wrecking. Boyer. They're wrecking everywhere. Boyer's on fire. Jeff Gordon's wrecked. And they Montoya. are still wrecking. Montoya, Stremi, Kenseth, Biffle, Marlin, Carl Edwards, Casey Mears all crashed on the final lap. Have you ever? Well, a couple of times. I'm going to repeat what I heard a few years ago. No, I have never. <laughs> I got so excited I broke the damn mirror in half. Jeff Gordon's day ends about like his teammates. Clint Boyer came across the start finish line on his roof. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. This is... David Stremme's climbed out. He is okay. Sterling Marlin. Who slid across to the to a stop? Well, Larry, let's see. Are they going to run these cars anymore? Uh, they were intending on it, but I don't <laughs> think many of them will. It, it may be a good time to bring the old car tomorrow out. What was the margin of victory for Kevin Harvick? Unofficially, two one hundredths of a second. I thought Mark had him. I thought he was going to hold him. And Mark Martin, a bridesmaid once again. He's got to be. He's got to be thrilled though. What a finish. Bakersfield, California's Kevin Harvick, who took over the seat in what became the 29 after the death of Dale Earnhardt, stormed up the outside. Kyle Busch couldn't hold him off. He had a full head of steam into turn three. There yes, was no question did. you were going to have to go the outside. Mark was not going to give up the inside. What happens back here is Kyle Busch gets on the apron ever so slightly, gets into the 17, and it's on from there. Look at the 38 car up on top of somebody. There's a car turning over. Look at this finish. And it's a drag race to the line, and we've seen Harvick do that before. Yes, we have. You can see Harvick trying to pinch him down to keep that momentum on him. A little side draft. Get a little side draft and try to pull ahead. Now, unofficially, Jeff Burton will finish third. Mike Wallace will finish fourth. And the top finish in Roush car, rookie David Reagan in the six. Unbelievable. Kevin Harvick was doing donuts in the grass. And he may have toasted the number 29. <laughs> I think he broke another transmission. Congratulations to Chevy driver Kevin Harvick, winner of the Daytona 500 from Chevy on American Revolution. What a weekend he's had. Bush race yesterday. And Mark Martin.
having a tremendous Daytona 500. We were ahead, man. I was waiting for them to throw the yellow. I agree, Mark. I thought they were going to. I thought maybe they would throw the yellow before they got here, but uh, they didn't. Third place, Jeff Burton congratulates Harvick. And where's the other RCR car? Watch the 07. It'll come in here from the right in the bottom lane. Clint Boyer gets slid sideways. Whammo. And he'll cross the start finish line unofficially upside down in the 18th position. On fire. I mean, that's Joey Chitwood couldn't do that. Boyer making a hasty exit through a small window opening. That's one of the things that's going to be addressed by the car of tomorrow. Yeah, I'm just glad he's uh, landed back on his wheels with that fire because uh, he didn't want to be trapped down in there. NASCAR does such a great job. Goodness. That's terrifying. Car was spinning down pit road, actually hit the pit wall. Until now, 1976 and 79 were the wildest Daytona 500 finishes ever. New one for the record books. Matt is with Mark Martin. And he's climbing from the car. You can see the disappointment on he and his crew members' faces. Mark, first off, take us on that last lap. It looked like basically you had the five covered. And then out of nowhere comes the 29. Well, we saw him up there, and uh, we just doing everything we could. You know, it was a Daytona 500, man. I just want to thank Bobby Ginn and everybody again racing, and especially the U.S. Army team. I'm so proud to be a part of this team. They gave me a chance at a Daytona 500. That's all I ever ask. I really hate I let them down. I gave it what I what I could, but I just uh, I didn't get it done. I, I really thought they were going to throw the caution. I was still ahead, and they were wrecking behind. And if they would have just thrown the yellow, it was in our fingers. But they waited and they waited and they waited, and I didn't have any pusher at the end, you know. And he was in the you know in the preferred spot for for second back forward. Uh, but just want to thank everybody for all their support. I wanted to win that thing. They were going to have to pry it out of my fingers, man. And I was looking back to see if we had any help, but I didn't see any back there. And it's just short. You always try to compartmentalize everything, but did you let yourself begin to think maybe this is the year looking at the situation? Hey, I, this is a green white checkered in the Daytona 500. I knew we had, a, a, you know, I knew the race was on and uh, man, we got so far, so far down the line. I saw him get that run. I tried to block it. And then I got back down and, you know, minus the wreck and everybody coming through there good with a good pusher, we still had it done. I really still thought, you know, as we entered turn three that we were going to get it done. And then they started wrecking and we were still ahead of him. But, you know, just uh, just wasn't meant to be. I, I, I didn't get the job done. Mark Martin finishes second in the Daytona 500. But boy, he did a whale of a job. You see Kevin Harvick's car sitting in Gatorade Victory Lane. He took the checker under green to decide the winner of the race. The caution immediately followed, so officially the race ends under caution. So now let's go down to Dick Bergren with the GM winning interview. And Kevin Harvick on his way out. Confetti. <laughs> oh, man. Out here. <laughs> hey, Kevin, where did you get that head of steam at the end of the race to win the Daytona 500? Well, I had uh, Jeff Burton behind Matt Kenseth, and Kenseth just pushed the hell out of me there. Uh, this Shell Pinzola Chevrolet got a little hot. We had to come in and take some tape off. We had a hole in the nose, and, and um, man, my go kart experience over the winter paid off because I didn't let off the floor, and we just kept hitting things in a wall. and just bouncing off everything, but man, this is a Daytona 500. Can you believe it? That was just a- uh, Do you believe a, it? I can't believe it. I mean, we were 30 something there with 15 laps to go and we came up through there, but just gotta thank Richard and Todd Berry and all these guys just for an awesome race car. Congratulations thank to you. you. Well done, Mike. Protege of Rick Corelli, the Bakersfield, California racer, wife Delana embracing him. Today, the Daytona 500 has changed the life of Kevin Harvick forever. Dead gum, it makes me. It, you know, Daytona puts tears in the eyes. I don't care whether you're down there or up here. It's a, 
What, a, what an accomplishment. They are crying in celebration, and others will be crying in frustration. Let's have a look at what happened here on the final lap. Look where Harvick is coming down the back. But look at this run he got. He he called it, Matt Kenseth, in that 17 car. You see Kyle Busch tried to go up and block, but he had such a head of steam it was too late. Yeah, I think all that moving around is probably what got Kyle. It messed his entry up into turn three, and then uh, I think it might have just upset his car a little bit, and he gets loose right there under a Kenseth 17 car, and it's on from there. And at the wire, Harvick, because of that push down the back stretch, got out front of Mark Martin. Mark comes back and comes oh so close. I, but you know what? I'm glad NASCAR let him finish the race. Yes. There's definitely. no reason that the cars are wrecking behind him, not in front of him. It was not going to change a thing. Not a thing. For the fourth time, the winner of the Bush race on Saturday wins the Daytona 500. Dale Jr., 2004. Darrell Waltrip in 89. Bobby Allison in 1988, one Saturday and Sunday.